I'll turn it off when we chant too, so you won't be competing with that. But let's come into a comfortable, quiet seat now. I'm so glad to see you, all of you. Thanks. So taking a comfortable seat, rest your hands in your lap where you are most at ease. You're welcome to close your eyes. You're welcome to keep your eyes open, but relatively steady and inward. Let's begin by having all five senses come into the present moment, beginning with the sense of sound. The first sense that we have in utero even is our ability to sense sound, including the rhythm of our mother's heartbeat. When you listen for sound right now, don't try to name it. Rather, simply let sound remind you that you are here and the present moment includes you. Notice when you listen to sound, there is also the space between sounds and the space beyond all sound. In a similar way, the space between thoughts and the background untouched by all thoughts. And whether your eyes are open or closed, become aware of the sense of sight, recognizing that even if the eyes are closed, your eyelids register the light that's coming into the room. And right now, it's not our job to increase light or decrease light, nor to name or judge light, but just to know that the eyes have already recalibrated, that the light is something your eyes can translate for you. Whether the light is from the sun, which is immensely far away, or from a light in your room, that light is also tapped into a source beyond just the bulb, which could not light up on its own without being screwed in, and that could not light up without the device being plugged in, and that would not be able to work without electricity from a source beyond your home. You can sense with both the eyes and the ears that we are connected to a much larger majesty, a matrix of sorts. And then come into the sensations of the present moment. So this sense that where you are touching the ground, your mat, your blanket, and even where your hands are touching your lap. These are the sensations of the body in the present moment. And even though the body is also finite as an expression, it too is connected to a much larger majesty, nature itself. As you lengthen your spine on the inside, in that lengthening, feel the sensations of the spine becoming taller, the inside sensations, and then allow your breathing to begin to deepen, but only so deep as you don't lose touch with the sound, space beyond sound, light, the distant sources of light physical sensation as a connection to the immense natural world. So your breath should not be so dynamic that you become very personalized about your breath and your body and your practice. 
We want the breath to connect our sense of the majesty, the immensity, and then this intimacy we have in the here and now. So each of us is at once this intimacy, and we also are resting in that immensity. And with awareness of that, please bring your hands together at your heart and consider the gesture of pranam. And a gesture of respect and humility in that regard. And then allowing yourself, listen now as the music fades and becomes silence. And then we will chant together this particular invocation as we are so grateful for this intelligence in nature and in life that we get to participate in. This is the Gayatri Mantra, and we're giving praise to the sun and to nature and to that immensity that's allowing us to be here at all. You may sing with me. Om Bhavasivaha. Tatsavetor Varenyam Bargo Devasya de Mohi Tiyoyona Prachodayata Om So you may bow your head to your heart and release your hands and please thoughtfully open your eyes. And I'm going to switch my camera over to the standing camera. So just one moment as I organize that. And thank you, Ben, for being here. I'll tell Susie when to switch between your video as Spotlight and mine. We'll start with mine on Spotlight for this part of the practice. I'm going to go to full screen so I can see you guys. And just one moment, let's see. Good, all righty. So please come up to standing. And I'm going to ask you to have a place where you can use your wall or a closed door. Or if necessary, you could put your handprints on the window in your home. I know people don't like to do that, but you can clean the window later. Um, so what we're going to do is a chest opening process that I like to use the wall for. So we take this off. The wall behind me is actually part solid wall and part very old closet door. This house was built in the 1940s, so that closet door is original. So what we're going to be doing, let's imagine that I'm facing the wall right now as I look at you. This is me miming as a yoga teacher. 
I'm not trained to mime, <laughs> but this is the wall that I'm facing for you. And you're gonna take your right hand out against the wall at about shoulder height and set the shoulder back and then begin turning. So you turn your feet, your knees, your hips. Then you're gonna turn the heart, lift the collarbones and turn your gaze. So when you set into that, I hope is that you feel the upper right chest opening up to the stretch. When you lift the chest and heart here, then let the breath come down into the lower pelvis. So at the moment, you probably can't initiate your inhale from the chest unless you really work at it. Your body's gonna want the breath to come down into the back of the sacrum, into the low belly, and to start with the diaphragm, pulling the breath in. And as you sense the breath, remind yourself that there is sound and this immense space beyond sound. And there's light and the source of light beyond your personal reach. And there are sensations, including the breath, breathing your body, that these sensations remind you that you're a part of the natural world, this immensity. Please do one more breath cycle. Consider again the deep low belly, but also the back of your waist. And then when you exhale, slowly rotate towards the wall and release your right arm down. And then facing that same wall, take your left arm out to the side and turn to do the second side. And when you're turning, turn your feet, your shins and knees, your hips, but roll the left shoulder back. Good, I can see you on my mirror <laughs> from my monitor. So yeah, roll the left shoulder back, lift up through your heart and your collarbones. And then welcome the breath to come down into the low abdomen. Reminding yourself through the ears, the eyes and the inner sensations present moment is both very intimate to you and reminds you of this immensity that we all share. You want to keep a sense of tone in the legs here so the lower hemisphere of your body is stable. Lift your heart while breathing down through your diaphragm. Please do one more breath in. And then as you exhale, rotate towards the wall and let the left arm come down. And pause there in kind of a relaxed mountain pose just to sense like, wow, what's changed in your ecosystem mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, just by one simple yoga pose. Now I'm going to ask you to place your hands up high on that same wall. Let's pretend that this is my wall. And I'm going to place my hands up just above my eye height and then step back. So the stepping back process will look something like this. If I had a wall right here. So when you set up, place your hands and then step backwards. And you're coming into this sort of downward slope for the hands, arms, heart, and spine. Keep the legs energized and stable. And Susie can go to Ben's video so that they can see because he's in the pose and I'm not. So this downward slope for the spine is something where you can sense the breath coming into the lower belly. But it's possible to have this full spectrum experience. This is like downward dog pose but done with the wall. Take one more breath cycle in, please. And then exhale and roll yourself up to standing. Again, let the arms come down so that both arms dangle and you're standing in mountain pose. And that mountain pose lets you know, here is home base. Or again, you have this kind of intimacy with the body, with your psyche, with your heart. 
Now, please take a wide stance on your yoga mat, and I would like you to have a yoga strap. If you don't have a strap, you can substitute a bathrobe, sash, or a towel, or a shawl, whatever you're using. And we'll just take the strappy part, this part that I have here. So your wide stance is the length of one leg, right between the two heels. And then let's take the strap, shoulder width apart for both hands. Inhale, raise your arms up. And then exhale, slide your hands apart and come down to this chest opening position here. Now the distance that you slide your hands has to be according to your own body. Okay. And I'm gonna have you root down through the tailbone and let the hips come slightly forward, maybe not further forward than your toes. Lift up through your heart and let's come into a little back bend pose. For those of you who are comfortable with it and your balance will sustain it, you can gaze up. And it will be okay for Susie to take Ben's video back to the spotlight for this one. Inhale one more time. And then as you exhale, just bring your head upright, bring your heart upright, but slide the hands down behind. So you're going to loosen the strap lower the hands and arms. And then let's bow forward to the pose called Prasarata Parottanasana. You can put aside the yoga strap, bring your fingertips down to the floor, and allow yourself to breathe in such a way as the low belly is really receptive to the inhale. I'm able to see your practice because Ben is our spotlight, so he lets me not have to be in the pose right now. And that's a real gift to me. So thank you for being here, Ben. I'm going to ask you guys now to pick up a part of our practice from yesterday and start to gently count the length of your inhale and the length of your exhale. And we're going to see if it's possible that your breath becomes more spacious when you now keep your legs as they are and walk your hands forward so they look like downward dog arms but don't lean your hips forward. So you're gonna be almost making like a hammock or a sense of traction between your fingertips on the floor and your hips leaning way back. And let's really practice here, the cultivation of the breath. Might be a little bit longer without any kind of frenzy. A Little bit slower on the exhale without causing breathlessness. And see if for three breath cycles, you could match your inhale length and your exhale length. And you may just be getting a sense of the pace of your breath this morning. My hope is that this pace becomes more easeful and more consistent as the practice goes forward. Some of that's going to be reflected physiologically. Some of it is mentally. Some of it is the quality of our attention in any one moment. Let's finish one more breath cycle, please. And then walk your hands back towards your feet and place your hands on your hips. Please rise up to standing. Great. And take your yoga strap and just the strappy part again. The hands can be shoulder width apart. Thank you, Susie, for coming back to my video. We're gonna raise the arms up. Look how tall I must be. I'm outside the frame of my camera. I know that you all know that I'm not a tall person. So I'm just having a little fun. So now I'd like you to keep the hips centered and arc over to your left. So also keep the shoulders and arms parallel. Sometimes people, when we go to the side, like the left arm holds the right arm with it. Thank you, Ben, for being our model. For everyone, press down from your right hip into your right heel and let the breath rise up the right hemisphere of the body. Try to sense again both the intimacy of the inner experience while remembering the immensity of nature and life and all that sustains and supports us right now. 
And when you next exhale, tone your right low belly and rise up to standing. And then over to the other side, please. So arc to your right. You need to use some abdominal muscles here for sure, because otherwise you will be creasing the rib cage towards your hips. Instead of that, press down into your left heel and keep the left hemisphere of the body kind of like a shooting star. Yeah. You're breathing in smoothly and patiently. And with your next exhale, tone your left low belly, rise up to center. For the joy of it, sweep the hands down behind you. Make a big circle as you start lowering the arms all the way back behind you. And then one more time, bow forward to Prasarata Paratanasana. You can put the strap aside. And let's do this now. On the inhale, lift up to your fingertips and bring your spine towards the crown of your skull. On the exhale, bow your torso down towards the space between your legs, kind of like we do in the sun salutation with Uttanasana. Now I'm going to ask you to count your breath cycle. So your inhale, you say breathing in, two, three, and so on. And the exhale, you say breathing out, two, three, and so on. And see if you can match the length of your inhale and your exhale at least twice. with two consecutive breath cycles where you've matched the inhale and the exhale and shift your hands to your hips and please rise up to standing and step into mountain pose and come to the front of your mat for Surya Namaskar, the sun salutation. Great. And the sun salutation, I am recommending these days, you guys, that we use blocks for the sun salutation. It's a universal recommendation. It's not about how long your hamstrings are. And what I like about it for this morning is that when we go down to the deep bow of Uttanasana, you're gonna be pressing your hands into the blocks and toning the low belly to help complete the exhale. So please join your hands together. Close your eyes for a moment. And sense the light against your lids whether it's a light bulb or the sun, the source of that light is still quite far from where you're actually standing. You sense your connection to that which is larger than your own personal experience. In the same way as you're breathing in now, let us sense that which is breathing your body. Energize your legs, through your tailbone, and here we go. Inhale, sweep the hands down, wide and up. And on the up, let's look for a little back bend in the heart. Please lift your gaze so they can go to Ben's video. And then exhale, wide sweep of the arms like a swan dive. Please come forward and down. Place your hands on your blocks and curl down towards your Uttanasana with firm pressure on both blocks. Then inhale, glide your heart forward, come up to your fingertips so there's a lot more space to breathe. And then exhale to deeply bow towards the legs so that the pressure of your hands against the blocks helps you to tone the deep low belly. Let's rise up, Ordva Hastasana, sweep the arms wide, lift your heart, come into a standing back bend at the very top of the pose. And exhale your hands to your heart. Beautiful, thank you. Let's repeat that and add to it. Inhale, raise your arms up. You're doing a lovely job, thank you everyone. Exhale, swan dive to come forward. Root down into your feet and your palms. Inhale, glide the heart forward. 
come to your fingertips. So there's a lot of space for the breath. Exhale, take your left foot straight back to what's called the basic lunge. Now inhale, sweep the arms wide and rise up to your crescent lunge. We're gonna add something from yesterday's practice. So Susie can come back to my video, please. So on the inhale, the nose is forward, the arms are straight up. When you exhale, open your right arm and gaze to your right. And then inhale, raise your right arm and center your head and synchronize that. Exhale, open to the right, gaze to your right. Inhale, raise your arm, return your head, synchronize. Okay, one more time, exhale to the right. Inhale to center. Raise your heart and your gaze. And then exhale, make a wide circle of the arms. Touch the two blocks. Let's step forward with the inhalation. Come to your fingertips, bring your heart forward. And then exhale, take the right foot back. Inhale, rise up to your crescent lunge and we'll stay with Ben's video this time. Good, okay, with the exhale, open your left arm and gaze to your left. Rotate your head deeply left. Inhale, raise your left arm as you center your head. Try to synchronize those so your brain is really concentrating. Three times, so go left again, please, as you exhale. Nice job, very good. Inhale to center. Notice how it is to arrive in the center and exhale. How is it to depart to the left with your gaze, with your arm? And then last time, inhale, rise up. Bring your head to center. Make a little back bend at the top. And now exhale, sweep your arms wide, come slowly forward. Let's put the two blocks aside, please, and step backwards to downward dog pose. And in downward dog pose, it's symmetrical, it's a quadruped pose, it's a place of refuge and inwardness. So go ahead and close the eyes and notice how the quality of light touching the eyelids is different in a downward facing position. And yet the intelligence of the eyes to recalibrate is the same. There's a constancy in that, even though the quality of light is ever changing. Now, as you next inhale, plan for some fortitude and determination, and please come forward to plank pose. Now, we're going to practice something from yesterday's class again. So on the inhale, you're going to toe touch your right toes to the right. You're going to look to your left. Then on the exhale, you come back to center with your toes and your nose. Inhale, toes left, nose right. Exhale to center. Inhale, right toes right, nose left. Exhale to center. Inhale, left foot, nose to the right. Exhale to center. One more time on each side, please. And last time left, and then the foot and the nose come to center. Beautiful job. When you're ready to then exhale, bend your elbows, come down through Chaturanga Dandasana onto your stomach. And in Chaturanga, let's make a little pillow then for the hands and the head. Rest your forehead down. Let the upper back surrender. Also invite the mind to surrender. And watch all these amazing faculties going on inside of you you're being taken care of right now. So your circulation, respiration, innervation, your body temperature. Now 
this amazing intelligence inside the body. Now please place your hands beneath your shoulders for Cobra Pose. We're going to go between Bhujangasana and Pranam. So Ben is in the Pranam position right now. It's when we come down and we bow the forehead to the floor. And then we're going to inhale and roll up to Cobra Pose like a little water wheel rising up through the heart. Beautiful. Thank you, Ben. And then we exhale and roll down kind of vertebrae by vertebrae. And as the head bows to the floor, your gaze goes in towards your heart. And then we inhale again to roll up to Bhujangasana. And exhale to roll down. Now for three breath cycles, feel into this for yourself. Can you balance your inhale with your exhale? You can expect that the duration of the breath is less than when you're sitting or standing because of the shape of the pose. But are you able to balance your in-breath, that length, with your out-breath? Notice the kind of concentration that is needed and the intimacy that can come from such an invitation. Here's the last one. And then please curl your toes under. Energize your legs and inhale, press up to plank pose. And then reach high to downward facing dog pose again. We're gonna pick up our sun salutation from here. So when your hands, arms, shoulders are stable, keep your left leg also stable and inhale, raise your right leg up behind you. Watch out for the walls that are behind you or in my case, the closet. And then exhale, swing your right foot forward between your hands. Bring your blocks back into view so that they're on either side of your right ankle. We're gonna be using the blocks, not directly in the next moment, but in a few moments from here. So let's inhale, rise up to the crescent lunge. Good, now I'm gonna ask Susie to come back to my video. We're gonna do this with the hands clasped. Please go like so on the inhale, press the heels of your hands forward and rise up and look up. And then exhale, glide the hands down behind your head and look down. Inhale to press up and to look up. Exhale, hands behind your head and you gaze down. Yes, we are working on the upper back and the heart. Inhale to reach up again, press up, look up. And then exhale, glide your hands down behind your head and look down. Now press up, look up and give yourself some freedom. And exhale the arms wide and come forward over your right leg. Please touch the two blocks and then pause right here. <clears throat> I'd like you to place the block for your left hand directly under your left shoulder. Place your right hand on your right knee and begin twisting from the low belly. While gazing down, I want you to stack your left wrist, left elbow, upper arm, the upper arm bone, and then the shoulder socket, and then your rib cage, your heart, now your right shoulder, and then raise your right arm. Listen for the way you're breathing into your body now. And if possible, you can close your eyes and sense the light against your eyelids. So though you are having an experience inside, you are not forgetting the larger world in which you are practicing. And as you next exhale, release your right hand down to your block. And please step backwards to downward dog pose. Put the blocks aside because one-legged dog pose deserves two hands solidly on the floor. 
Nice job. Okay, once you feel stable and symmetrical, then inhale, raise your left leg high. Good. And exhale, float your left foot forward between your two hands. Keep the blocks nearby, and as you inhale, rise up, please. Interlace your fingers, but change the interlace by one digit, so it feels like the awkward hand hold. And then inhale to go up, please. Raise your gaze. Exhale, pull the elbows down, gaze down. Inhale to reach up. Open your heart and your gaze. Exhale, hands behind your head, gaze down. Inhale to go up. Exhale to come down. And last one, inhale to rise. And then a big circle with the arms. Now place the block for your right hand directly under your right shoulder. And gaze down so that as you're twisting, you're not in a hurry. And you can also see from your right wrist to your right elbow, right upper arm. Then stack your ribcage as you twist your heart to your left. And then raise your left arm. And if you like, you can also turn your gaze. And just as you're choosing where you're working in the pose, if possible to keep your balance, you can close your eyes and sense the light coming to your eyelids. You're doing such a beautiful job. Thank you for your practice. We want to be people of stamina, concentration, and love. I know this about you. So when you next exhale, let this pose descend. Touch the two blocks. And now inhale quietly, guide the heart forward and your gaze forward. And then exhale and quietly glide back down to Uttanasana. And inhale, rise up to Ordva Hastasana. And exhale, come down to the heart. I'm going to ask you to take a seat for a couple of moments in a pose that we call in yoga, it's called Virasana. You take your block to sit on. We also call this sitting Zazen because if you were sitting on a Zen meditation bench, you'd have that bench under your hips and the thighs are parallel. And you can close your eyes and watch all the inner faculties of the body taking care to bring you back to homeostasis. I sometimes say as if you had shaken a snow globe, you set it on the counter, and you're watching the snow particles settle down. Remind yourself there's the intimacy of eyes, ears, and body sensation. And there is this immensity that we are in relationship with right now. We're hearing, seeing, sensing, and breathing. Now place the tip of your tongue behind the top two teeth. Hollow the back of the throat to make the sound of the ujjayi breath. And as you begin the ujjayi breath, listen for the pace of your inhale 
to equal your exhale. And for the pauses at the top and the bottom of the breath to also be equal. If your inhale is eight counts, your pause might be two. And the exhale may be eight counts then to match. And the pause might just be two. Do your best to include the back of your body in the inhale. So it's also the back of your heart, even up between the upper shoulder blades and just up under the collarbones on the front side too. And please do that for two breath cycles more. And then you rest at the end of that second breath cycle. Listen to the silence beyond all sound. The silence behind all thought. Om Bargo de vasio di mohi. Iyo yo na prachore ata. And then you can open your eyes thoughtfully. And please watch on my screen. I'm going to do a demonstration. And I'll demonstrate facing forward because I want you to see what happens with the support arm. And then I'll demonstrate a little bit sideways. And let me um, say that this was one of my all time favorite yoga poses when I first learned about it. And I did it as any former gymnast would do. <laughs> I did it as if I was standing on the balance beam performing in competition. And then I had to learn how to do it as a yogi. And I had to learn how to do it again after my car accident, which was about um, 13 years ago now. And then again, after my hip surgery, and again, after my hip replacement, I had to learn it again. And then I had to keep learning it on behalf of myself and others to do it as a yoga. So I'm gonna place these two blocks forward and start with a, what I'm gonna call a tripod stance. So I'll show you with my left leg because it's your right leg in the screen. So I have the start position, each hand under the shoulder with the blocks and the foot, and this is lined up. So our tripod is, I place this block forward, this block forward, so now I have a tripod in the making between my two hands and my support foot. And then you float yourself forward, and you do want to stack directly over the standing leg. So as the pelvis is stacking like that, you don't have to move the hands or arms yet. And then I want you to stack directly over the wrist, the elbow, the shoulder, and then the other arm rises up. So I'm asking you not to have your support shoulder tipping in towards the center line like this, but to keep it directly over the wrist. And then you have the left leg vertical, and my right leg, excuse me, because it's mirroring you, the right arm, a little bit of a diagonal, and you can begin to turn your head, your gaze, and your heart. This is called Ardha Chandrasana. And the descent, we're gonna bring the eyes down first, the left hand comes down to the block, we're back in that tripod position, 
and we step back with the blocks to the starting position. Okay, so just very briefly from the side, and then we'll go to Ben's camera as the spotlight. So here's the beginning position. There you go. I go to my tripod and I float because yogis know how to levitate. And only once you have your balance do you start turning your gaze and you have to look past your hair unless you have, do not have that issue. So it's called Ardha Chandrasana. Okay, so let's try it out as a class. Thank you, Ben, for being on the ready. Let's do the right foot forward for you guys first. I was trying to make my left foot into my right foot. I hope that was clear. <laughs> so now, as you stand on the right foot, place your blocks forward how Ben has done, and then float yourself onto your right leg. Good. Yep. And start stacking your hips without picking up your hands. So that stacking means that you're just so taking your time right now. You're not in competition with your body. And then you begin to stack your right forearm over your right wrist, right upper arm over the right elbow, right shoulder, and then raise your left arm high. And keeping the standing leg steady, you may turn your head and your gaze while breathing in and breathing out. Who knows how long we're going to stay. So you're breathing and enjoying. Lengthen the tailbone towards your left heel. And while keeping the pose, turn only your nose down towards the floor next to your right big toe. So you can gaze at the big toe and then start lowering your left hand back down to the block. You can find it without moving your eyes. Level your hips. Bend your right knee. And as you walk the blocks back to line up with your right foot, step your left toes down behind you. And then prepare for the other side, please. Good job, thank you so much. You're sticking with it. So this is concentration. And notice that in the course of the pose, you probably become more self-preoccupied, forgetting that immensity that we are also practicing in. So float yourself through the stages onto your left leg and see if you can bring with you this quiet sense that your eyes, your ears, your breath, nature itself, you are practicing not performing. We are communing, not competing. You want your standing leg to be vertical, as you can see for Ben, from his heel to his hip. You want the support arm to also be vertical. It means that your left wrist and shoulder are in a plumb line together. As you turn your heart and raise your left arm as you've already done, if you've been able to turn your eyes up, notice where the mind goes. What is the quality of the breath? Nice work. As you next exhale, turn only your nose back down towards the floor and gaze somewhere near your left big toe. And then start lowering your right arm without having to look for where the block is. You can remember it. Your body can sense it. And then as you bend your standing leg, walk the blocks back to bookend your foot on either side to bracket it. And then take your right toes back to the floor behind you. And for the sake of symmetry, please step back to downward facing dog pose. Put the blocks aside. Awesome. Okay, and then please touch your knees down and come to kneeling. I'm very excited now to run a little experiment with you so Susie can come back to my video. Okay, great job on that, you guys. So we were talking yesterday about the cross-crawl pattern of the brain and the, the dual hemisphere function. And now I'm very curious if we do Nadi Shodhana, alternate nostril breathing, 
and come back into this practice, is your balance better? Okay, so let's try it out. Thank you for being here to experiment that the pranayama is not something just at the end of your practice like a dessert or a decoration like a parsley on a plate. It's something internal to the practice as well. So let's take the right hand, fold the first two fingers in, and bring your right hand up. So we're going to try to balance the length of the inhale and the exhale, each of you in your own pace. And the practice is inhale left nostril, and then you'll exhale right, you'll inhale right, and then you'll exhale left. So you'll change the nostrils after each inhalation. Please begin. Continue for a couple more breath cycles. When you complete your next exhale through the left nostril, then you can return your right hand to your lap. Notice the inner experience of the mind. And if it's at all possible that the practice centered your attention, let's see if we can now proceed into Ardha Chandrasana. We will go on the right leg first. Begin from your basic lunge. I will give only the most simple instructions here. So basic lunge, two blocks like a tripod. Keeping your gaze down, float yourself into Ardha Chandrasana. While you're in Ardha Chandrasana, if you'd like to turn your gaze, you may do so. It's a personal choice. You might even just choose to turn your gaze part way. Look for the inner stability of a yogi. You are practicing, not performing. You are communing, not competing. You may start your descent at any time. If you haven't yet, now is a good time to consider the descent. You'll return to the basic lunge. 
And then you can change sides and see how the left leg does. Start from your basic lunge, add your tripod arms, float onto your standing leg. Notice the quality of the mind and the breath. You may choose to turn your gaze. You may also choose not to. Listen for the inner quiet of the yogi that you are. You may make your descent at any time, of course. If you haven't yet begun your descent, now might be a good time to do so. And you'll go to your tripod position and then back to your basic lunge. And then let's step down and return to Vajrasana for a few moments. We're about to move towards a twisting practice, so I want you to take a comfortable seat and feel the effect of that part of your practice. Notice when you come back to Vajrasana, our hope is that you didn't, in a way, leave home during the asana, and now you're trying to get back to home. Of course, if that's what's happened, home welcomes you back. Our hope, rather, is that you're able to carry that inner sense of Nani Shodhana and the mind with you in the adventure. Much like your inner yoga practice goes with you to the grocery store, to the post office, to conversations. Now I'm going to ask you to reach for a blanket to sit on for a few twisting poses. And I have folded my blanket in advance. This is my trifold blanket to sit on. You can keep your blocks close by for those who might need a block during the twist. Otherwise, please come over to sit and to sit with the ankles crossed. Yep. And both hands out over the knees. All right, so I'm going to be saying right and left, and I'll do it as my actual right, my actual left, and we'll see how Ben chooses. We both teach a lot in public classes, and in a public class, we mirror our students. So, so sometimes on the Zoom here, remembering that I'm mirroring or not, it becomes a little bit confusing. Okay, with the ankles crossed, please bring your left hand to your right knee. I'm going to take a block with me to twist to the right. And when you twist, go ahead and look over your right shoulder. And Susie can go to Ben's video. Yeah, thank you. In the twisting position, when you gaze over your right shoulder, how far you gaze is really up to you. But it should be said it's up to the neck. And the neck is deciding based on the thoracic spine, which is kind of deciding based on the thoracolumbar juncture. That's the place where your thoracic spine meets your lumbar spine. And it's kind of right behind your stomach. So I want you to think about orienting slightly back towards your kidneys and kind of like the back side of the organ of the stomach. And twist from there. So we aren't just twisting from the chin or the nose. And see if it's possible now inside your twist that you could balance your inhale with your exhale. It means that you don't have your longest, deepest, forever and ever breath, but you could have a relaxed inner ecology in which the inhale balances with the exhale.
Please do that for one more breath cycle. And then exhale and rotate around to face forward. We're gonna change sides. So please change the cross of the ankles for diversity. And then bring your right hand over to your left knee. If you're using a block, take it with you as you twist to your left. And again, while you're twisting, we of course, we have this instinct in human nature that we're a bit competitive or you know we're conjuring up ideas about how far we have to go in a yoga pose so look to see if you've twisted mostly your chin or mostly one of your shoulders and see if you can come down near to the stomach and the back of the organ of the stomach so you're twisting from the mid back staying broad and we're twisting from that place you're also, of course, using a twist in the organ deeper in the abdomen. The lumbar spine itself doesn't have a lot of twisting capacity. So in the abdomen, the organs can move towards the twist. And then that place at the top of your lumbar spine, the bottom of your thoracic spine, and then up through your thoracic spine and finally towards your head and your eyes. And then when you next exhale, take one breath cycle to count the length of your in-breath and the length of your out-breath. And then release your twist to come about to face forward. Place your hands out over your knees. And now bring your right knee up to your chest. Stretch your left leg out for the pose called Marityasana. And you might again want a blanket for the hand that goes behind you. And I'm going to ask you, I know block, excuse me, I'm going to ask you to put your right hand behind you and your left hand in front of you. Susie, so you can come back to my video for the moment. And to begin this twist, I'd like us to inhale and raise up to feel like a back bend quality. And then exhale and level the spine as you come over to hook your left elbow over your right knee. And the amount of hook that you have here is going to be based on your body proportions your genetics and your flexibility. So for some of you hooking your armpit over your knee, it's very easy. And for me, it's my elbow. But then I choose to keep my hand down like this and twist over to the right. And I'm gonna ask you now to listen to the breath in the back of your waist. Really think of this particular twist. It's more directed down into the abdomen because it's a little bit more snug you have compression on the belly. So can you allow the inhale to kind of blossom into the back waist and balance your inhale with your exhale? It would make sense if your breath is a little bit shorter in this position because of the compression on the abdomen. So please do one more breath cycle. Know that you're massaging the organs in the gut. You're massaging the digestive system. And then as you release the pose, Come around to Dandasana, so both legs go straight. And we'll go to Ben's video and do the other side. So step the left foot up. 
walk the right hand behind you. We're gonna do our little back, or left hand behind you, excuse me. We're gonna do our back bend first. So reach the right arm forward towards your right leg. Raise up, deep breath in. And then exhale and cross over so that your right elbow crosses your left knee. And as you're turning the deep low belly here, listen for the breath to go into the back hemisphere of your body. You are massaging the organs of digestion. So important. Ayurveda tells us that digestion is the key to mental health. And if you think of all the creatures on the planet, the digestive processes abound, even for a worm, a cat, a dolphin, a human. So inside our body, this particular ecology, we also have this inner, inner tube that is its own ecology its own microbiome. We're massaging the organs that support that digestive system in this twisting pose. And when you next exhale, Rotate around to Dandasana. Great. And then I'm going to have Susie come back to my video. I'll show you what we're going to finish with. So one block is going to be for the head. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I know some of you have only one block. So the other prop that we'll use right now is going to be this blanket. Okay, so I took this blanket from the storage fold like this. And I'm folding it into thirds. I'm doing that like a pastry chef, very experienced. I just like that and there it was done. <laughs> so that is for the upper back and the heart. The block is for the head. So when I lie back here, I want this to be for the shoulder blades and the arms cascade down to the back side of the blanket. Some of you are going to choose to keep your knees bent like I'm doing right now. That's totally fine. Others will take the legs straight. Also fine. The thing I want you to watch for is that this blanket under the upper back is not lower on your upper back than your shoulder blades. So it's not pushing your front ribs up towards the ceiling. It is simply allowing this kind of waterfall quality. Your gaze towards your heart. The heart flows down towards the stomach. The stomach flows down and beyond. And so please lie on your back using one support for your head, a little higher than your heart, and one support for your upper back and heart. And I'd like you to do the first few moments here without any concentration on the breath. You're just going to let it breathe you. I will give you a breathing practice in just a few moments. So let everything settle. This is a very delicate and intelligent, very powerful system. Now I'm going to ask you to imagine the inner body having a lower third to the torso. That's the pelvis mid-third between the belly button and the bottom of the sternum. And then the upper third is the chest, heart, and collarbones. I'm just describing the front side of that, but it's three-dimensional. And I'm gonna ask you to evenly divide your inhale into those three regions. So you have maybe a count of three for the low inhale, three for the mid-inhale, and three for the upper, upper inhale. And then try exhaling for a pace of nine, keeping the exhale in the lower body, in the lower abdomen. Let's try that a few times, please.
For anybody for whom you have the experience with pranayama, you can add in a pause at the top of each three count inhale. So for example, you might inhale low belly for three, pause for three, inhale mid belly for three, pause for three, and then inhale to the heart for three, and pause for three. And the exhale will still be nine counts. For those of you who are using the pause between the inhales, your body's kind of acclimating right there in that pause, it's kind of like a short suspension. And that may give you access to the upper third of the lungs when you get to the final third of the breath. Please complete one more breath cycle. And at the end of your exhale for nine counts there, I'd like you to pause before we transition to Shavasana. So for most people, this won't be their comfortable Shavasana position because at a certain point, the upper back might start complaining. When you have finished your pranayama, you feel you've respected the process enough, then you can make your simple transition to Shavasana. And Susie can bring the camera back to me, thank you. And for your Shavasana, any comfortable nourishing position that you want to do is of course fine. You also could take just that blanket you had a moment ago and roll it to go under your knees for a simple Shavasana, or you could cover up with that blanket. Let your attention come inside where you have both this intimacy with life and this access to the immensity from which we were all able to arrive here and that immensity to which each of us is returning. When you're resting now, it's really an important and sacred time. It's the most important pose in the physical practice of asana, or shavasana. Let the senses turn inward. Let the mind go inward. The body can take refuge. You feel this intimacy, even in the tiny cells of the body, being repaired right now even the tiny neural pathways, finding their healthful grooves. Om Bhagavad
Welcome the body to be even a few degrees more relaxed, a little bit heavier. And try to sense once more the intimacy and the immensity. Both are within you. As Mayor Baba said, it does not take a large eye to see a large mountain for that which is seeing through the eye is larger than the mountain. It is not so much that you are in the cosmos as that the cosmos are within you. You may quietly wiggle your fingers and your toes. when you're ready to please bend your knees and transition to your right side and you can use both hands to come back up to sitting we'll share a few minutes of meditation together as the the uh, pinnacle of your practice to have a meditative mind. So please return to sitting when you can. And take the seat that is most stable for you, requires the least amount of effort. It does not take a large eye to see a large mountain. It is because that in you which is seeing is larger than the mountain. Mayor Baba said, it's not so much that you are in the cosmos as that the cosmos is in you. You may close your eyes, come into your meditative possibility, meditative presence. such a gem that we have this in our lives. So when you sit, imagine you can also feel the cosmos in each person, dozens of people practicing with you right now. Sense your capacity for soaking this in, being infused with this, so it will last through the day. So 
bring your hands together at your heart. We'll sing the Om Shanti together. Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Om Shanti 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 Peace, peace, everlasting peace, peace in all directions. As you like, you may bow your head to your heart and release your hands, open your eyes if you want. I have just a, a couple of housekeeping announcements. One is that there is a retreat next weekend. And if you'd like to join us, please go to the website, diafoundation.org. It's listed there. And also we're gonna start a class, a little series for beginners. So for those of you for whom you're sheltering in place with people who they don't think they could do yoga, they haven't had a strong interest, learning online seems kind of odd. We are not practicing as beginners right now. We have beginner's mind, I hope, but you have experienced yoga practices before you came. So for your beginners, Lynn is gonna offer a series so that they can have the, the pragmatics and the foundation available to them. Then they'll know how to join a class online. So those are my housekeeping announcements. Now we have, for those who'd like, to stay, you can, and I'll answer questions from the practice or um, find out how you did with the practice or how was your pranayama infused half moon pose, your Agha Chandrasana. That's amazing. 